Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Kathy Neptune, and I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. I think you're going to like what we're serving tonight. This is my kid's favorite, and I don't know if I told you, but um, my grandson Aiden and his friends Juliana and Angie love to cook, so on Sundays I often go over and we do a day with Grandma Kathy, and we do some wonderful cooking classes together. Not really classes, but they're turning into quite the cooks. They're 13 and 15, and I love the time. It's great making memories. So I hope you're doing the same with your children, grandchildren, or children that just want to cook. It's, it's just a great experience. And this happens to be one of their favorite, and we're doing a stuffed meatloaf, and you're going to be surprised at what we stuff the meatloaf with, and I'll share that in a little, little bit. So first of all, we have some ground lean hamburger, about 90% lean, which is this part here, and that's probably a pound and a quarter, and then my ratio is usually about a third to uh, a quarter of the amount of ground fresh pork to offset, and that adds a little meatiness to the bowl. And then into this, I'm gonna take, I have some fresh breadcrumbs, and you can use any kind of bread. And I'm gonna add a little bit of milk, and you know me with measurements, you just wanna pour in enough milk to soften the breadcrumbs. You can see they're probably a little bit dry, so we're gonna add probably a half a cup of milk to about three quarter cup of breadcrumbs. And you can use any kind of bread that you have. It's a great way to use that. And then I have two eggs. I'm gonna add those. And I'm gonna put them right in here so that we don't have to do too much mixing. Because when you mix your meat, if you over mix it, it makes it tough. So we wanna just barely get your mixture together. And then I'm going to add some seasoning to this. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And you can eyeball this. And again, I'm going to add this all into the mixture. Probably a teaspoon of regular salt because I raided my seasoning pile again. And this is a buttery steakhouse seasoning. And in here, it has some onion powder, garlic powder, red bell pepper, parsley um and that's about it and salt and pepper so this kind of takes the place if you didn't have this you could probably use onion powder garlic powder whatever you have so oh that smells so fragrant it's got all the mixes that you'd probably put in there anyway and it saves a lot of space so probably a teaspoon of that and because i've made this so many times I don't have to take a sample, but what you could do to make sure you got all the seasonings correct is take a little patty and put it on a, a um, like a, a small dinner plate and put it in the microwave until it's cooked. Probably it only takes about a minute or two on each side and then see what test your seasonings and see if you have enough in there. So I'm going to add... A little at a time. It'll probably take all of that. But I'm just going to mix this around. This makes wonderful meatballs, too. I love meatballs with this mixture. I'm going to add a little more seasoning because I don't think I added enough. You can do fresh parsley or grated onions if you like, but I found. I find that the breadcrumbs with the milk and the egg in them really seasons this very, very nicely. You could put on some gloves and get into this with your hands if you'd like. And this is going to serve four people easily and make some nice sandwiches too. That beef is so nice and fresh. And I think I'm going to add the whole amount that I had. It makes it so nice and moist. And you could do ground turkey if you'd like. Um, and add, I always add the pork to it because it 
that's what makes it moist and juicy. And if you wanted to season this with a different kind of flavoring, you could certainly do a Mexican flavoring on this too and put any kind of topping that you like. And we're going to do a barbecue topping on here. So I'm just mixing it. You can see there's still a little bit of the breadcrumb and egg mixture that's in little clumps around there. And that looks about right. So I'm taking my loaf pan. Look at this. It's a nice deep loaf pan. And I'm going to take a small amount of this and put this in the middle. I'm going to hold this up so you can see what I'm doing. Probably halfway full. So I have about this much in there. I'm going to put a little bit more. And I'm going to make a well, if you will, a little well in the center. And I'm going to do it with a coffee mug. This I find this is the easiest way to do it. But if you have your children in the kitchen, have them put on some gloves or put a piece of plastic in here and have them go at it and make a little indent or a well in the middle. And it doesn't have to be fancy. But just so I'm pressing this in the sides, put a little more in the sides. So it's kind of like that. You can see on the edges. And you can take your spoon if you need to patch a little bit. You can certainly do that. But I think that looks pretty good. And then we have the rest of it. And now for the fun part. And we have a good, pretty substantial layer in the bottom. And try and square that off a little bit so we can get our stuffing that we're going to stuff in the middle. And are you ready for this? Look what we're going to put inside. Hot dogs. How fun is this? So you have your hamburger and your hot dogs. And I roasted these in the oven, not for very long, just a small amount of time. And I'm going to take a short one. Let me see if I should probably cut these. Let me think. I think we can do two. I think one whole one is going to be plenty. So I cut some of them in half just in case I had to reconfigure everything. But I think this is going to be good. So you can see now I've pushed in the hot dogs in the bottom and kind of set them in there. And then I'm going to take some cheese over here, some cheese slices. And you can do whatever flavor cheese you want. I have American, I have cheddar, and I'm going to put a little bit, just another slight layer over that. How does it look so far? Pretty good. I think they're going to be so surprised. And you don't tell them anybody what's in here, unless they're in the kitchen, of course, helping you, because it's kind of a surprise. And I'm going to support this side a little bit more. So there you go. You never know there's anything hiding in there. And you smooth it out as you go. Let's put some more hot dogs in there. And the hot dogs roasted in the oven probably about 20, 25 minutes or so. And it's a little bit wider over here, so I think I can get... One and a half hot dogs. See, the top is a little bit wider than the bottom on this. So we're going to prop that in. Put the, So we have one and a half on the top layers, like that. Kind of press it down a little bit. And then we're going to add the final top. Oh, wait a minute, we forgot the cheese. Can't forget the cheese. Sometimes I do cheddar, sometimes I do American, sometimes I do both. Let's do a nice layer over here. And then, as you can see, there's nothing too exact about this. And it's pretty amazing. We got, we're going to use probably most of this. And like I said, if you have any leftovers, they make wonderful meatballs. And there you go. Smooth it all out. And I have my oven preheating at 350 degrees. I'm going to save that for my bolognese tomorrow. 
And now we're going to add um, to the top of this. I'm going to make a barbecue sauce and put this over the top. And the oven is only at 350, so we don't have to worry about this baking, over baking with the barbecue sauce. It kind of insulates your barbecue sauce. So I have here about a uh, two-thirds cup of any kind of ketchup. And I'm going to add to that a little barbecue sauce because you want it to taste like barbecue and you need a little smokiness. And if you didn't have barbecue sauce already, of course you could use make it all barbecue sauce. But uh, I like the ketchup, the tomatoey flavor. You could just add hickory smoke to it or a smoke rub. A little bit of mustard, and I use two different kinds. I have a regular hot dog mustard and I had a maple mustard. I thought, well, that sounds pretty good. I love to hit all my pantry ingredients. And then a little bit of Worcestershire because it's a beefy flavor. It gives it a nice depth of flavor. And then some brown sugar. Now, I have to tell you, this is homemade brown sugar. Yes, it is. Now, if you, I didn't want to run out to the store, I was out of brown sugar. So you take a little bit of molasses and put it in your brown sugar I mean in regular white sugar in the blender and just blend it up till it turns this wonderful brown sugar color now if you wanted to have um, a lighter brown sugar guess what you do you just don't add as much molasses in it so that's a great little time-saving tip when you need something that isn't in your pantry you just make it so I think that's kind of fun or sometimes you reach for your brown sugar and it's all dry and lumpy. You can put it in the microwave for a few minutes. Or you can just make up your own homemade brown sugar. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pour this over the top. And you could even save some of this and serve alongside, which is what I think I'm going to do. Because I made so much, but it's so good if you want a little more on each slice. So not a whole lot so that it's drowning. And I'm going to put this uh, on a cookie sheet, I think, just to be safe. Because you never know with the spillage or if it's nice and juicy. You don't want anything in your oven. So we're going to put that in at 350 for about 40 minutes. Check it after 40 minutes to see if it's done. And there we go. Let's set our timer. And there we go. So now I'm going to set this aside. We're going to make some oven roasted potatoes. These are really easy to do. They're a great accompaniment. I mean, who doesn't love potatoes with your meatloaf? And they're going to go in the oven at the same time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these over here, and I got my cutting board, and these are all washed, and I have, you know how I love my beautiful cast iron skillet. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there, just on the bottom, and I'm going to slice my potatoes. I'm going to use my bigger knife. And I'm going to cut these in half. And I try, if you can line these up and see, they're kind of the same width so that they cook evenly. And what I like to do is kind of see how they're going to fit in here before I slice too many, just to make sure they're all going to fit. And we're going to season these. These make a lot of these because they're really good as leftovers, too. You think I can fit one more? I think so. Look at that. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to take those out and put them in a bag, and we're going to season them. And like I said, make sure you scrub your potatoes really well. There's a lot of vitamins and nutrients and flavor, of course, in the skins. So we're going to put the potatoes in the bag, and we're going to roast them. 
in the oven in the pan the same time as the meatloaf so how cool is that that you can have everything done at the same time and because they're a little uh, smaller they're gonna kind of cook a little more you keep an eye out for the use your smaller potatoes and then I'm gonna put a little seasoned salt sea salt rather and you want to really season potatoes need a lot of help on the seasoning and some black pepper you know how I love my seasonings you can buy black uh, peppers all different colors and they're so fun because they all have different flavors the pink peppercorns tend to be a little more floral or have a little more flavor to them a lighter flavor now this is so fun it's roasted vegetables and fries spice blend and in here it has bell pepper paprika onion um, black pepper celery seed oregano cumin and sage that's a lot of flavors in one bottle of spice so we're going to really oops, coat those well toss them around really well and get them back in the pan the same way I took them out hopefully and again if you have young children they love to do this and these are so good with ketchup or especially that barbecue sauce that we made for the topping you know what if you have an air fryer too these would be so good in an air fryer um, Harry and I recently bought an air fryer and I absolutely love it. So I'm hoping to bring you some recipes from our air fryer experiences. It's so fun and these would be wonderful. Look at all the seasoning on these. See, they're all coated and full of flavor and that's exactly what you want. Now you saw I took all these out so they should, out of the pan, so they should all go back in. Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. And the bottom of these are going to really roast in the pan. And look at that. How did I do that? And these go into the oven as well. And when we come back, I'm going to do a great salad. And also, I have a great question. Have you ever wondered how to serve your guests or trying to keep track of what they like, what they can eat? Because everybody has such various need, dietary needs and so forth. I'm going to show, share with you a great tip on how to keep track of what everybody likes. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. I promised to give you some advice on um, how to keep track of your guests. I, and I, I was inspired by this email that I got. And thank you all for your emails. I love them. I read them all and they give me great incentive to come up with new ideas. This is from Janet in Lemonster. She said, hi, Kathy, I'm a newlywed. Well, congratulations. And we love to entertain. Good way to start a marriage. I am concerned about what to make for our guests and want to know a good way to keep track of what everyone's tastes and preferences and diets are. Any suggestions? Thank you and love your show. Well, thank you, Janet. That's a great email. And I'm, I'm, it's a great question, too, because at some point when you're starting to ent entertain and over the years, you want to be sure and make what you think your guests will like. And I don't want you to learn the way I learned over the years when you make a wonderful beef stew for somebody who's a vegetarian or you do some wonderful homemade bread and somebody is gluten free. You learn pretty fast that there's a better way to do this. And I'll share with you what I do. It's worked for me. It's adaptable. I've done it for years, and it really saves a lot of uh, grief, mistakes, and aggravation. So I take little index cards for every one of our friends because being a newlywed now, you're not going to be too familiar with your new husband's friends and even the families and what they like and what they don't like. So I make out a little index card for each person and I get a little file box, you know, like a recipe card box. And I put down their name, address, phone number, email. And then I have a little segment and you can even use the back for their food preferences. So they may like sugar-free. They may like organic. 
um, they may not eat fish. So you can put that in there as a notation. Then you want to put out down allergies. Like I mentioned, gluten-free. If somebody's diabetic, you want to take that into consideration. It, because there's so many different things that people uh, can't eat. My Harry can't eat onions and garlic, and he's allergic to wine. So I have to drink his share of wine. But I don't mind. <laughs> I do that because he's my Harry. <laughs> so you want to put those things down there and make a note of it because God forbid you make something that has wine in a gravy or sauce. That's not a good thing. And then I also love this idea, their favorite restaurants. So if they have a special occasion, or if it's their birthday, or if they've entertained you at their home and you want to treat them to something special or a gift certificate for their favorite restaurant for a special occasion, you have the name of their restaurant there too. And you can put other information like um, when their birthday is and put everything on this card and it's kind of like your friend file, I call it, a friend and family file. And you have a card, and behind these, with all the pertinent information, I put a card that says, dishes served here, in other words, at my home, and the date. So I keep track of what I served them that night or that afternoon, because believe it or not, you after a while, you can't remember what, you made for people and what they liked you can make comments on there you know wasn't too crazy about uh, we had all desserts at you know at the end of the night we didn't have any main course you want to put that in there or somebody you know um you made something you didn't know they were on a diet all the time or whatever you want to put down a comment on what you made them and the date of it and what the re reaction was and you can make out a card you can do the front and the back, or you can make out a card every time you make them dinner. And it's so nice to keep track of what you made them. And then sometimes, honestly, I pull this menu out, and it has a big star on the corner. And I say, that was a great menu, and I haven't made that for Ellen and John. So I'm going to make that menu as great and save yourself all that time and energy trying to think up a great menu that will work well for your company. So you have it already in here. You just have to duplicate it and you know who you made it for. So God forbid you don't do it again to, for the same person. And then one more thing is the dishes they served at their home and then the date because they're going to make you something nice. Now, if you go to somebody's house and you have peanut butter and jelly, guess what? At my house, they probably won't have filet mignon, but you never know. Or if their peanut butter and jelly was absolutely out of this world and you can't stop talking about it, you don't want to have them over and make them a better peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So there's a lot of strategy to this, a lot of logistics, but it'll help keep you organized. It'll keep you going. And honestly, I look back at some of these menus when mac and cheese was in or these casseroles were in and I was cooking them in the date. And it's kind of like a trip down memory lane. So... I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a great tradition, and you can even keep these. Hand them down to your daughters or sons when they get married and include the recipes in some of these as a keepsake. It's a great tradition to keep or to start. So thank you, Janet. That's a great question. And now we're going to um, finish up our dinner. Our meatloaf is in there. It's got about another 20 minutes. We made it with the pork and the seasonings and the stuffed hot dogs and a barbecue sauce on top. So to go with that, I thought we'd do kind of a traditional dinner and I'm going to make you a salad, a tossed salad with ranch dressing. And it doesn't sound like anything special, but I'm going to make homemade ranch dressing, not the one in the packet. It's so easy, so delicious. You're going to wonder why you haven't done it before. And you probably have a lot of these pantry items already. So I'm going to inspire you, hopefully, to try making this on your own. And I'm going to start with the ranch dressing. And you can make this ahead of time and let it set overnight if you'd like. And I'm going to start with the ingredients here. I have a little bit of buttermilk. And I'm probably using two tablespoons of these first ingredients. 
And you know what? I made this buttermilk out of a buttermilk powder that you can find in a can at your grocery store. And it has all the measurements on there. I think it's four tablespoons of the mil buttermilk powder that you keep in your refrigerator. And then a cup of water, and that makes a cup of buttermilk. So you take those measurements and do that according to what you like. So I have uh, two tablespoons of buttermilk powder and a, a about two tablespoons of water in there. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of regular mayonnaise because it's going to be a creamy dressing. We're going to take a two tablespoons of sour cream and you can do fat free or whichever you'd like and I'm going to whisk that together just to get it going I love ranch dressing it has that buttermilk adds a nice little tang to it now at this point you can add either apple cider vinegar or I have fresh lemon juice here and I'm not going to add as much lemon juice. I'm going to make it and then I'm going to taste it because you can always add more. And now the fun part, we're going to do the spices. So we have some dried onion powder and these are all probably just a shake, not even a scant half a teaspoon, probably a quarter teaspoon if you can do that or you can measure it a quarter teaspoon of garlic and I'm using a roasted garlic because I think it has a little more flavor and you could use fresh garlic in this but traditionally most of your ranch dressings are in a powder form so this mimics that you can use fresh dill or dill weed again because it's a dry powder I'm using dill weed in the same amounts on all of these so you do the same amounts of your mayo buttermilk lemon juice and sour cream and you do the same about a scant i'd say half a quarter to a half teaspoon of your dry herbs and then i'm going to do salt and pepper so a good amount because we're making probably half a teaspoon of I like the Himalayan pink salt, some black pepper, a lot of black pepper, and I'm going to add in some freshly chopped chives. Oh, okay. So, probably say a teaspoon of chives and we're blending that up and you can see how creamy that is that is going to be nice and we're just going to let that set for a while I'm going to give that a taste just real quick to see if it needs any more lemon that's good I think a little more lemon juice would be really good I love the crunch of the fresh um chives in there so i'm going to use all of the lemon juice because i like it very fresh tasting you can certainly do dried chives but i like i said i like the crunch of the chives in there okay we're going to set that aside and like i said you could do that a little ahead of time and have it all ready to go i have a mixed greens salad there's arugula butter lettuce um little radicchio a very light style salad I just think this does better at serving and I find my children like the lightness but you can certainly do iceberg lettuce you can even do this a spinach salad holds up really really well to these flavors so experiment a little bit with your different flavors I think I'm gonna take and slice up a cucumber and you can add anything you want to this but i like the freshness of the peppers especially during the winter time they just have a wonderful fresh crispy flavor to the winter season and this goes really well i think with the dill that we put in that buttermilk dressing it just cucumbers and dill are just made for each other 
So look at how pretty that looks already. I'm going to do that. Let's do some. The tomatoes are always so beautiful. And I like to do these little cherry tomatoes that come in a package because they always have such good flavor and they look so beautiful. You can put exactly 11 in there or 9 or whatever, whenever you get tired of slicing tomatoes. And then you could do croutons on here if you like croutons. But I think we're going to have so much starch and everything with the potatoes. So those are our tomatoes. This would be good with Syrian bread, too. The next day, it makes a great salad. And look what I have here. Do you know what these are? These are our beautiful um, sugar sweet uh, shallots that we've made. Remember, I've done them several times before with sugar and water. And you just put your onions in here, and it gives you like a sweet onion. So where most children probably wouldn't like a, a regular onion, this takes the bitterness out and makes them very sweet. And I always suggest using them in place of a Vidalia onion. They're that sweet. And in here, it's probably a half a cup of water to two tablespoons of white sugar. And we'll put that on the top. Oh, what the heck, we'll put a lot in. And that's going to be our beautiful salad. And we're going to, when our meatloaf is done, we're going to slice it. And I like to put my dressing either on the side or I'm going to dress this right before we serve it. Because these greens are so delicate. Um, sometimes I like to use just all spinach salad. Uh, it, spinach in this too. And um, the romaine lettuce is excellent any time of year that is a nice crunch so you can go light on the lettuce for your taste or do a little more substantial type of lettuce but either way the flavor of the ranch dressing you're going to be amazed at how easy and how delicious a fresh ranch dressing can be so we're going to serve this all up and we'll be right back hi welcome back here's our finished stuffed hot dog meatloaf and some of you may be wondering why we roasted the hot dogs before I put them into the meatloaf. You could do them raw in the air and they would cook down, but you wouldn't have that roasted outside crispiness on the hot dogs if you like. But you certainly don't have to because they're generally fully cooked. But um, my family just prefers that little snap you get with a cooked roasted hot dog. So remember to do that. You could do it ahead. And then this is our beautiful stuffed meatloaf. And we're going to serve it with the extra barbecue sauce. Remember, we had put that on top. And you can see there's a bit of a glaze that the meatloaf gets, gets as it bakes in the oven with the barbecue sauce. And you're going to want to save some of that barbecue sauce for, look at our beautiful, beautiful roasted potatoes. And we're going to garnish those with some green onions on the top, but those are roasted beautifully in our cast iron skillet. That is wonderful, and save those. Those are great for breakfast. You can serve them like uh, roasted hash browns in the morning. Our wonderful homemade buttermilk dressing that we're gonna serve over the top of our fresh salad with tomatoes, cucumber, light lettuce leaves, and our sweetened onions. And you can leave this on the side in case somebody wants to help themselves. But what a, a beautiful uh, weeknight or dinner night with the children. Your, your children are going to love that. And you could even do that for a barbecue season. I think you'd be the talk of the tree if you did that. That would be fun. So I hope you enjoy these recipes and that you try them. Thank you again to everybody who writes in for recipes, tips, and resources for some of these great tools. It's so fun to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching, and may the fork be with you.